What is going on everybody and welcome back into Barley Studios. Who is excited for video number four of the Pumpkin King Tumblr series? We've already sculpted this amazing cup topper and as you can see I've already detail painted it and just to give you a teaser here of what you have to look forward to. So sit back and enjoy as we paint this amazing item in Windsor & Newton Galleria acrylic paints. All right, so let's just jump right into the video here, guys. Now, just remember that this is me attempting to kind of uh, have fun with 12 times speed. So normally I do around 6 times speed just because that's what LumaFusion default is. Uh, so by uploading it a second time into LumaFusion, I can do 12 times speed. But uh, particularly like, you know, on, on, you know, fast painting, things like this, not when I'm showing or describing something uh, in my hands or right there in person. But uh, I, I'm really going to have fun with experimenting just increasing the time lapse also going from 6 to 12 it also will cut the time of the video in half but y'all still don't lose that data or the content that would have been included if uh if i had you know kept it at six times speed so i hope y'all enjoy this if you do leave it in the comments uh if you like the six times speed let me know uh but right now i am also experimenting with uh 12 times speed so as you can see here a lot of you guys know that my painting style i love to base coat things in a full coat of Mars Black. I decided not to do that this time. Now I am using some Mars Black water down uh, just to get into some of those nooks and crannies that I had sculpted with the wire tool. Uh, it is very hard on the filbert brush but it is very very worthwhile when you get the detail uh, from the inks and the washes later on in the process. So I used the Mars Black just to kind of give it some definition between the pumpkin uh, ribs uh, as well as the, the, uh, the different in shading in the depth of the roots or the vines as it goes down the spine of the cup. So right now I'm just trying to build up some raw sienna, some burnt umber, a Mars Black around the actual uh, uh, woody texture of the crown. Uh, so I'm just kind of kind of build these up and uh, you won't see any real true details lock in until probably about the third or fourth layer. So I'm just starting off with the Mars Black and the browns and then we'll just work our way up into different colors. All of these paints are Windsor and Newton Galleria paints, uh, acrylics. Uh, I love their brand and everything about it. Uh, they they you know they flow smooth. They have vibrant colors, uh, and they just really look spectacular. I really don't see myself changing anytime soon. Uh, so Windsor and Newton, if you're uh, seeing this, uh, drop a comment below. I appreciate your uh, your great products here. So just applying that Mars Black, just trying to get a good coverage overall on the woody texture of the crown, uh, as well as those thorns that are kind of angled in different directions. I was doing all of this on TikTok Live, uh, so here periodically I'll kind of post that in the top right hand corner. There it is. And I'm so glad that I was able to, you know, have fun painting this with some of my, uh, my friends there on TikTok. Uh, they were able to kind of do their own projects, whether it's rhinestoning a tumbler or, uh, or uh, you know, just uh, painting or working with some polymer clay there. Uh, and I was able to listen to them chat and talk while I was, uh, you know, power painting this. I did all this in one session. Normally it takes me a few days to get some of these projects done, but I'm glad that I was able to kind of knock this out in a single night. Uh, it, it was very fun still took around two two and a half hours to paint it out entirely uh, and I still have to paint the underside in a probably a, a, a uh, the same yellowish orange tone that I made the mouth eyes and nose in that kind of pumpkin flesh tone uh, but that's just something small and simple and it's just going to be a solid color there's really not much to that So some of the same here, just building up those Mars black colors, and then we'll start to introduce different colors, uh, including the, the most vibrant, which is the uh, cadmium orange hue.
So as you can see here, I'm really starting to build up the browns and the marsh black there. Uh, now normally, like I said, the marsh black base would have eliminated some of this process, but then you're just working with a complete black palette there. Uh, we're going to start introducing some sap green here. I'm not using any hooker green in this portion of the build. I want these green tones to be very kind of kind of light toned because you know that's where the light would be cascading down from above onto the object. Uh, so the, the darker portions of the of the vines, I want to say for the lower portion of the spine towards the base. So what I'm doing, I'm just uh, using the side of the fill brush just to kind of brush on on some of the the higher spots of the the vines some of those sap green tones this is raw uh, sap green right out of the tube so there's nothing mixed in really with this right now and then i'm going to immediately go into my uh, pumpkin tones now i begin by painting this a pure cadmium orange hue uh, and then after I get about you know, one or two layers over the, the marsh black and brown washed base, then I can start to build up some more of those, uh, those details with some of the grunge like I did in the previous um, video number two where I painted the pumpkin main tumbler part. I really think there's really something satisfying about adding the orange to the object just because it contrasts so well against the green and it just really starts to bring it to life and bring up those colors that you expect to see with a pumpkin. Until that point, you know, it's kind of just imagine what it looks like until you get to the stage where, where it resembles what it should. Going to continue that orange tone all the way around. And I'm trying to more so apply really thick uh, portions on the, the tops of the ribs of the pumpkin and then trying to water it down in between so that some of that Mars Blatt still shows through, even if it's just a minuscule amount. So as we continue with the second layer of the orange here, you can really start to see that it, it does start to saturate quite a bit and you can see the glossiness of the paint. It's really starting to build up and it's really starting to layer in the way that it needs to, to really give a, a nice thick skin texture. I'm also starting to introduce some uh, some uh, burnt umber into the roots there. I just felt like the, the green was a little bit too green and I want to kind of break up those root tones with a little bit more brown before I lay on any, any brighter highlights of green. I'm also going to begin the process of starting to introduce uh, uh, burnt umber or raw umber onto the actual uh, woody crown texture here. So as I work that around, the Mars Black is going to get washed out quite a bit into more of a dark brown tone. And then throughout the, uh, the second part of the video there, I'll start to bring up those tones uh, to lighter and brighter tones until I finally get to the point where I'm able to use the actual uh, antique and pure gold. And I'll get to that here in a few minutes. I'm going to introduce a little bit more sap green as I go. Still using the side of the brush there, and I'm really focusing that green texture really on the higher spots of the vine texture. So I'm really trying not to sink it down too deep because as I go through the process, I'm really trying to separate the the, the grooves that I sculpted apart from the higher spots where those those lighter tones and the light would be. I'm also adding a little bit of orange wash to the bottom of that stem there. Maybe there's a little bit of a glare there. And when I come back in with a little bit more of a lighter brown later on in the process, it kind of makes that have a, like a little bit of a woody texture where it goes into the top of the actual pumpkin. Introducing that uh, raw umber and burnt umber into the actual woody texture of the crown there. Uh, originally, I was thinking about making, in, in video number uh, three, I was going to make this like a vine, a green vine texture. And I started that, that sculpting process, and it just wasn't meeting my expectations. I felt like it felt too, too light, too airy, uh, more of like a, a princess running through a, a daisy uh, flower patch. 
feel and it just wasn't meeting my, what I need. So I decided to make it a, like a wood texture and I separated the wood out from the actual uh, green vines there. So there is a separation point there and you can kind of imagine yourself, you know, maybe this grew after the fact, after he picked himself up off of the pumpkin patch ground, he started walking around and eventually he realized, man, I'm the biggest and baddest pumpkin out here. And maybe over time he grew this, this crown of thorns. Uh, I also hit that right there with a, a dirty wash spray, uh, a mixture of all sorts of brown colors, um, and I darken and lighten that depending on the project. In this situation, it was a mid-tone. I'm adding a cadmium yellow hue highlight pretty thick to the top of the pumpkin there uh, before I come in with almost one of my last layers of, of orange. And I'm doing a wet on wet blend here. Uh, it does kind of blend that yellow out a little bit. But it just brings up those tones to where it looks like there's a little bit of light hitting the very tops of the of the pumpkin there. Now some of that will kind of get washed out and blended out with the, with any kind of washes and inks that I put on it here in a little bit. But it's still very good to kind of include those layers in so that when you're up on the object or you're kind of sitting back and light does look down on it, you kind of do see those glares and the highlights to where they need to be. It's all about trusting the process and knowing that building up those layers in the right order is really going to look great when it all gets said and done. So as I said before, I was on live when I was doing this, so I was, I was so glad to be able to share this with people on, on TikTok. And I, I hope to eventually go live on YouTube as well as my following grows. As my following grows here on, on YouTube, I probably will shift completely over to YouTube. I just feel like it's a little bit more lucrative of, of a just a venture just because I can include and just completely transfer over my live content straight onto the YouTube channel. I just think that's really beneficial instead of like recording or, or you know posting in two different places. It would be really beneficial to be able to post it in one place and let everybody try to shift over from my highlight reel on TikTok onto YouTube to enjoy my content. So I'm slowly starting to introduce the lighter tones of brown here, more of a, a burnt umber here, uh, and then eventually I'll start to get out the raw sienna. So I'm coming in here with another layer of sap green here. Now this is still pure sap green. I start, I haven't really included any other colors in there to, to vary up the shades yet, uh, but I will here shortly start to introduce some cadmium yellow hue towards the later processes. And that is only specifically just for the very, very high highlights of the, of the vine systems. And then the last color that I'll probably introduce into it is just a little bit of yellow ochre, which I absolutely love in every single way. And anytime I have an excuse to use in a project that I really, really will strive to do so. Uh, and that's only specifically to kind of blend it with the existing vine texture spine that goes down the back of the cup so that when the plastic here is removed uh, and it's item on item contact, you really don't see too much of a transition uh, between the two root systems or vine systems.
All right, so you can see here that I'm starting to introduce a little bit of titanium white into my raw sienna mixture here. And there is a little bit of raw umber in there as well, just to bring in a little bit more of a, a darker brown to a red tone into that color. Uh, but not too much, just enough to where uh, it doesn't, I don't want it to look like raw sienna, that really, really light brown. I would like to have the kind of uh, thorns look like they kind of have, a, have like a, a charred or burnt or maybe like a like just a really grunge texture overall maybe this this type of uh, um, thorn system perhaps maybe had come out of like a um, a dark enchanted forest maybe uh, just even just putting those words into a description for those thorns make me want to use these thorns in other projects in the future even if it's like a, like a like a maybe a maleficent cup or something like that or maleficent sculpture i think that'd be pretty cool I'm also introducing more and more titanium white onto the tips of each individual thorn there. And that is so that when I come in with my, uh, my, my metallic gold later, that they have a little bit more shine to them. So you can put metallics over black, so you can put them over white. And depending on the undershade and depending on how, how thick you put those on, it depends on how they're really shaded. Uh, I'm going to put quite a few layers on there so it doesn't make as much of a difference. But I also like to put that to some kind of highlight on the tip so that if some of that color is at all coming through, then it just still looks good. As you can hear, I'm going to use a dollar uh, ink here and we're going to start introducing that. I do water this down quite a bit and the color that I like the most is sepia, which is just a really dark uh, grunge brown color. And I do water this down quite a bit, right? And even after I apply it to the actual uh, sculpture here and it sets in all the grooves and uh, nooks and grooves and crannies of the whole thing, uh, I do push it around quite a bit with the water uh, so it does doesn't give too much darkness to any of the ray spots. I just really wanted to set into all of those little micro scratches that I had applied with the wire tool. The same thing that we had done for uh, video number two in this series for the actual pumpkin head and face. Hitting that with a heat gun accelerates the dry time on those inks uh, and then we can move on to later stages. I do use inks almost pretty much over every single surface. Uh, mainly, mainly the actual orange pumpkin itself is where you can really see that 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 ink come alive uh, because it's such a bright tone that you're going over with those inks. But it is over over also the actual woody texture of the crown, as well as in between some of the vines on the back of the topper there. Bringing in a little bit more of the cadmium orange hue just on the very tops of the actual pumpkin ribs. And now I'm beginning to introduce a, a cadmium yellow hue into my uh, sap green and it's just going to bring up more of a sunny tone. Now I did not use cadmium yellow hue in any of the sap green on the lower portion of the vine system on the main tumbler and the spine. So only on the very tops of the actual structure do you see that and that's just because if there were sunlight out and about this is where it would get most of that sunlight so i may come back into the base later and introduce a little bit more of this just for some more pop just because if the light were kind of cascading past him onto the roots and the rock system below you may see a few of those green highlights as well but i definitely don't want to include those over the actual spine going down the back of his body so here we are actually introducing the, the gold here. Now I have two golds uh, that I really truly love. Both are folk art paints. Love folk art in this aspect here. They have made some great metallics. Uh, this is an antique gold and a pure gold. Antique gold is for the first few layers just to get the layers built up. And then I'll tip the end of each one in a pure gold, which I truly feel it has a slightly, slightly better shine uh, than the antique gold. I think they're very similar in a lot of aspects and it's probably something that's very small and very, mm, I mean, I won't say not noticeable, but I do notice it in some ways. And I'd like to introduce them both into two projects when I can. But you could get away with just one. Once I get the tips of each one of these uh, kind of uh, painted out the way that I like them, I will use the side of my brush uh, and I will go ahead and run it just along the raised portions of the woody texture of the crown itself just to give slight gold highlights to the, to the overall structure and not just to the thorns.
So that right there is looking pretty daggum good, guys. I'm really digging how this looks. Again, I was able to do this in one night, and as of right now, it is looking absolutely spectacular. Of course, we'll have to see what it looks like when I get all the epoxy and the resins on there. And I still have a few details to work out, including the, the yellow-orange meat texture on the underneath of the topper. Uh, and of, of course also the actual straw port there will also have to be painted in the same uh, uh, meat uh, yellow and orange tone there but I'm also going to eventually come back with some pumpkin guts later so maybe I'll save that for that stage maybe we'll do that at the same time what do you think guys? I think this thing is looking pretty bad, eh? And everything that I add to it is just increasing the overall quality of him and his overall detail. I think this is probably one of the, the most detailed items that I've ever created apart from Mad Mike Studios' 68 Robot Man build uh, where I sculpted the Welder Man um, in his likeness as well as a functional, fully functional welding helmet. What do you think guys? Now, I think one of the last things we have to do is run through these amazing glamour shots. Let's get it. But if I lay down and I play dead and I stay dead, maybe you'll get sick of being the monster out of my head, under my bed. Think you're something out of my nightmares, sitting right there. But if I lay down. Silhouettes of you are like a taunt Never really noticed what you want With you I don't ever feel calm I can feel the sweat inside my palms Play with me like cats and a string You don't understand the pain it brings You don't ever wanna give me wings You don't ever wanna set me free You know I'm addicted to you And it's twisted you've been gifted with the evil voodoo Got me coming back for more, even when I've been screwed Dolls full of pins, pierce my heart straight through I got issues in my head, I like you in my bed But you keep me on red, oh Everything is like a test, I better not text or I'll come off desperate But if I lay down and I play dead and I stay dead Whoa, what do you think guys? This thing turned out beyond my expectations. Not only was the sculpt work fun, the detail painting it was just as fun. So what we're going to do now is we're going to begin the process of actually sculpting his uh, his cigar that's going to go in his mouth. I know his eyes look a little bit wonky, but this eye is supposed to be higher because his uh, lip is pulled up. And when you pull your lip up, sometimes it kind of pinches your eye right there. So that's why that eye looks slightly different. And I know it looks kind of wonky otherwise. But otherwise, I really hope y'all enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed using Winsor & Newton Galleria acrylic paints to paint this out. I love how vibrant those colors turned out straight out of the tube uh, without mixing or anything. It looks absolutely incredible. But otherwise, I really do hope y'all enjoyed also the 12 times speed. I'm experimenting with running my time lapses quite a bit faster. Uh, instead of just 6 times speed, it's 12 times speed. And it also allows me to cut my speed of my, my overall length of the video in half. Otherwise, I appreciate you all you do, guys. Uh, make sure you hit the subscription and the like button. And I will catch you guys on the next video. My heart's been wounded. Silhouettes of you are like a dawn. Never really know just what you want With you I don't ever feel calm I can feel the sweat inside my palms Play with me like cats and a string You don't understand the pain it 